Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, and in this video we'll look at how you can use DriveX, powered by the Academy Award winning Mocha Tracking Technology, to add tracking to third-party generators and effects like Motion VFX's mFlare. While TrackX includes several Flare templates, if you need something more complex, you might want to reach for mFlare, a powerful product that allows a great deal of flexibility. But it hasn't been possible to use it with Mocha Tracking until now. All you need is a copy of DriveX, mFlare, and Motion. In the C2 DriveX category, there's a template in Final Cut 10 designed to be edited, called Template Open in Motion. Right-click it and choose Open in Motion. In this template, you'll find a simple placeholder particle effect, which we're going to replace. We want to add mFlare, so go to the Library, Generators, Motion VFX, and find mFlare Motion 5. Drag it into the Track group. If you wanted to move the entire flare around, that's all you'd need to do, and that's what you might do with something like a particle effect. But because we need to move the center of the flare around, that point there, with the tracked element, we need to make a couple of extra changes. We're going to drag link X and link Y from the track group there onto the mFlare motion object. Now we're going to select that object and look in the inspector and then look in the behaviors tab. The apply to parameter in the link X and link Y behaviors needs to be changed. We're going to go to object, mFlare motion 5, global settings, and then light. Now because this is link X, I need to go to light X. And I'll repeat all of that with link Y. Going to object, mFlare motion 5, global settings, light, and this time to Y. Now that's going to move the effect, but it's also moved the position. We're also going to change two things here. Apply mode, rather than add to source, we need to change it to replace with source for each of these. The track group needs to be repositioned. So we select the track group, look at properties, and set X and Y to zero. There are some other behaviors here, and I'll just rearrange so I can see that. Link cell rotation, link scale Y, and link scale X, and they all need to be moved across to the mFlare object as well. So I'll select all of those and drag them on. Now, link cell rotation. With link cell rotation, we're going to change the apply to parameter first. I'm going to change it to object, mFlare motion 5, Global Settings, Rotation. Now that we've changed the Apply To, we're going to change the Source parameter as well to Object, Track To Animation for Effect, which is Drive X, and then change it to Scale and Rotation and Y. This Scale and Rotation is a special parameter. X is Scale and Y is Rotation. This is Rotation, so we're going to choose Y. That's now active. The last two parameters, link scale X and link scale Y, we need to do the same things. We're going to change the apply to first, and so we go to object, mFlare motion 5, global settings, scale, this is scale X. The source parameter is from track to animation for effect, scale, and these are both going to be attached to X, which is the scale option we want. So I'll do that to link scale Y as well. But the source parameter is going to be X for both X and Y. Now you can see that makes it a little bit too big. So we're going to change the scale to 0.1. We need to do that for link scale X and link scale Y. We can delete the emitter we no longer need, so I'll select that and delete it. The instructions for mFlare say to apply it with the Add Blend Mode, so we're going to select the entire element, look under Properties, and then change the Blend Mode to Add. In the Generator tab, 
we're going to publish several properties so we can access them in Final Cut 10. And to do that, we right click on their name and choose Publish. Under this section, FCPX Edit, we definitely need to publish Edit and Presets. And then we also need to publish Center, Random Seed, Size, Brightness, Rotation, Global Color, and Color. We also need to tick this Publish OSC button down here. Finally, if you want to be able to fade this flare out, head to Properties and right-click Opacity and publish that too. We're going to select this third pop-up in the list, which is currently called Particle Cell. We're going to rename that MFlare Controls. Now we're going to click on the Project in Layers, click on the Project section in the Inspector, and make sure that all the controls that we want are accessible. If you want to rearrange any of these, you can drag to rearrange here. But this is what you'll see in Final Cut 10. Here I'm also going to uncheck rotation by default, because I don't think I'm going to use it too often. If you find that some of these controls are too strong, like for example the link cell rotation, if you find that that is rotating too quickly when it is linked, then you can try changing the scale parameter here. It's the same thing we did to Link Scale Y and Link Scale X, we just reduced the impact of the track data on the rotation. Now, if we think we're done, we just need to Save As, make sure we don't choose Save, Save As, and I'm going to save this as a new effect. Now, I'm going to make a new category, and I'm going to call it C2 Drive X Extras. You may have a category like this already. And within that, I'm going to call it mflare plus drive x. And hit publish. Back in Final Cut Pro, I'll now see a new category of effects. I can drag this to a clip just like I can with drive x or with mflare. Back at the beginning, I'm going to select this little area here, and I'm going to track it forward. I still have the ability to access all of the mflare presets by clicking on presets, popping up a new one, and choosing something entirely different if I want to. And I can access rotation to spin things around, I can access size, to make it bigger or smaller, I can change the color, and of course I can fade it out. And these can be keyframed as usual. You can now get the best of both worlds, mocker tracking from DriveX, and great flares from mFlare. DriveX is available now from coremelt.com, including both special effects elements and 3D text. There's a free trial and discounts for anyone who owns SliceX or TrackX. Thanks for watching.